photos of untethered spacewalks, accidental snaps, and what an eclipse looks like on Mars. We are going to be looking at all of that and more as we cover the top 10 bizarre NASA photos most people haven't seen. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have the after photo. Many of us have seen the portrait of Edwin Buzz Aldrin on the moon. It's an iconic image and has gone on to become one of the most inspiring images of all time, but what we don't see is the one that came immediately after. Maybe it's an arm, maybe it's a chest or a belly, either way it belongs to the taker of the photo, Neil Armstrong. Even the first people on the moon take accidental photos. I mean, it can't be easy in all of that gear. I can't even make a phone call with gloves on. I can't even imagine being in space trying to snap a selfie while making history. It's nice to see the clean, polished, inspiring part of history, but it's also nice to sometimes remind ourselves that we are all just humans, and humans are silly. In our number 9 spot today we have the Crescent Earth. Less bizarre and more downright artistic and beautiful, truly the only thing that makes this photo bizarre is its lack of popularity as well as the point of view and how opposite of our own it is. At a first glance it looks like a photo of the night sky as seen from a sort of piece of space technology and it looks like the photo captures a sweet crescent moon. While this makes a lot of sense, what we're actually seeing is the earth as it rises and looms over the Apollo 14 lander. That crescent is earth. We look like that from the moon. It completely makes sense, it's just something I had failed to think about before. If you were to camp out on the far side of the moon, because the moon and earth are tidally locked, you wouldn't be able to see earth. But on the near side of the moon, you'd see the earth all the time, and through the course of about a month, the earth would also go through phases just like the moon does, but they'd be the direct opposite of the phases people on earth would be witnessing the moon going through. If that made any sense at all. I can't believe I had never seen this photo before because it truly is stunning. In our number 8 spot today we have the moon. This image shows a series of 3 photographs that are just a few of the hundreds taken by the Apollo astronauts. While there are many interesting photos that were taken by those on the Apollo missions, the vast majority of them are just of the moon as seen from their window. Don't get me wrong, seeing photos of the moon up close and personal is magnificent. It's very cool and it's stunning to look at, but once you see it a few dozen times in photos, perhaps the novelty wears off a bit. Of course the same can't be said for seeing it actually in real life out of the window next to you though. Until travel to the moon becomes a regular old everyday thing like it's a commute to work, that novelty won't ever wear off as evidenced by the extremely extensive catalogue of close up moon photos taken by the crew. It honestly is kind of nice to see though. To me astronauts seem so cool and serious and intelligent, and while all of those things likely are very true, they're also giddy excited humans who were clearly thrilled to be where they were. It's just humanizing, that's all I'm saying. In our number 7 spot today we have the end of the roll. This is a photo that was taken on the Apollo 7 mission and while it was likely meant to be just a stunning photo, thank goodness it wasn't meant to include or document anything exceptionally important because, uh, well, the photo is greatly obscured by the end of the roll tape. <laughs> this photo is hilarious. It appears to be of earth and it looks like the photo would show this beautiful white swirl spanning across the blue planet. A beautiful piece of photography if it weren't for the rectangle taking up a third of the image right smack dab in the middle. These people are astronauts, not photographers, and despite that, they managed to take some exceptional photos while on their missions, so I think it's fair to cut them some slack for this one. It's not like their thumb was in the way or something like that. In our number 6 spot today we have the selfie. The word selfie hasn't been around for that long, but people have been taking them for years. With adjustable views and forward facing cameras, it's definitely gotten a lot easier, but that didn't stop Apollo 17's Ron Evans from having his hand at them, while of course in space. This photo shows about half of Ron, although it's tough to tell with him decked out in his spacesuit. Apparently he snapped this photo while he was retrieving exposed film from outside of the spacecraft. I think that means he was in the midst of a spacewalk when he snapped this selfie. That is perhaps the most badass selfie of all time. On the way back to Earth near the end of the mission, Evans did a 1 hour and 6 minute long spacewalk, so it's entirely possible that this is exactly where this photo is from. I mean, that would explain the absolute nothingness that can be seen behind him. In our number 5 spot today we have 
number two. When we hear about space missions, we often hear of the grueling work and preparations, or perhaps the science and mathematics that went into the planning, or maybe we're just there for the cool photos and interesting discoveries. But whatever it is, we normally don't hear about, either from reports or the astronaut themselves, is how on earth they managed to use the facilities while flying through space and living in zero gravity. Well, thanks to Apollo 17, some of the mysteries surrounding it were unveiled, although this photo didn't exactly go viral. The final, for now, mission to the moon had those on board snapping shots of the plastic bags that were filled with their space pee. Also, note the device used to help collect it that is located at the top of the bag. Yeah, that little thing was actually cited as the reason women couldn't serve in the Apollo space program. You're telling me that NASA could figure out how to send people to the moon, but it was too difficult at the time to figure out the female anatomy and how a woman could pee in space? Okay, it's a little suspicious at best. And in our number four spot today, we have the Mars eclipse. So this is more of a video rather than one single image. Well, actually it's a series of 89 different images that, when strung together, act like a video, but I digress. It was all captured by NASA's Curiosity rover as it showed us insights into what life is like on Mars. So on Earth, we have this weird coincidence that the distance ratio between the Earth and the Moon versus the Earth and the Sun is almost the same as the size ratio between the Moon and the Sun. This is why when the Moon passes in front of the Sun for a total eclipse, it covers it completely. On other planets, namely Mars, that's not what happens. When one of the moons of Mars passes in front of the Sun, it's much smaller and it appears like this. Curiosity was able to observe a ton of these instances, which are called trans it's from two moons, Phobos and Deimos. It's just really strange to see how things that the average person wouldn't have necessarily thought about are so completely different on other planets. Of course it makes sense and it's perfectly logical, it's just strange to see it right in front of your eyes and really take a second to think about it. In our number 3 spot today we have the series. This is a series of photographs that were taken on the Apollo 17 mission. The first in the series is another photo that has gone down in history as one of the most iconic. A photo of our beautiful planet as seen from space. I mean, come on, how stunning. We are so lucky to have this as our home. The next photo followed up the last iconic one, and while still interesting, it definitely leaves a little something to be desired. It's a simple photo of a floating engine stage. Still cool, just not as cool as the Earth one. The next photo, however, is when things go a little awry. It appears as though the next photo is someone's failed attempt at photographing the sun. It's so funny. It's just white. No one can see a thing. It's exactly what anyone would do and I love it. The final photo in the series has whoever took the photos returning back to snap some shots of Earth. I guess they likely didn't realize that the one they already had was better than anyone could have imagined. In our number two spot today, we have Mimis. This is a photo that my brain can't even begin to comprehend as real. It's a photo of one of Saturn's moons called Mimis. This moon just so happens to have a 130 kilometer wide crater on it that is called Herschel. This is cool and interesting and makes this moon look absolutely fascinating, but this photo caught by the Cassini spacecraft in 2005 really brings it to a whole new level. As the sun lit up the Herschel crater, the spacecraft caught this image where we can actually see the rings of Saturn in the background. Firstly, Saturn has at least 83 moons, so snapping such a gorgeous picture of one isolated one probably isn't the easiest thing in the world, especially for a spacecraft. Secondly, some of the moons are huge. Like the biggest of them all, Titan is bigger than the planet Mercury. It's less massive, and I know Mercury isn't a huge planet, but still, that's pretty huge for a moon, but I guess that isn't surprising considering the size of Saturn. The rings of Saturn are mostly comprised of ice particles with smaller amounts of rocky debris and dust, and it's exceptionally interesting to see how they look, even when you're up close. This photo probably isn't that bizarre, but it certainly is spectacular. And yes, you're not alone if you're sitting there thinking that this moon looks a heck of a lot like a Death Star. In our number one spot today, we have Alone. No, this isn't a photo from space thriller Gravity, which stars Sandra Bullock and George Clooney, but if you haven't seen it, it's a great movie and I would highly recommend it. 
Not necessarily the most scientifically accurate movie, but definitely anxiety inducing. Anyway, back to the photo. This is actually a photo of NASA astronaut Bruce McCann in 1984. I have no idea how I hadn't seen this photo ever before as it clearly shows Bruce just roaming free from the space shuttle Challenger. No, obviously it wasn't the one that exploded. I had the same thought, they're different, I looked it up. He was able to do this thanks to a nitrogen powered jetpack which was called the manned maneuvering unit and it actually led to him being the first person to ever do a spacewalk untethered. Quite possibly the coolest and one of the most brave things ever. Like I'd want to do it so bad, but would I risk the possibility of endlessly floating till I met a horrific death once my supplies ran out? Probably not. Bruce had some interesting things to say about the experience, however, saying, quote, I was grossly overtrained. I was just anxious to get out there and fly. I felt very comfortable. It got so cold my teeth were chattering and I was shivering, but that was a very minor thing. I'd been told of the quiet vacuum you experience in space, but with three radio links saying, how's your oxygen holding out? Stay away from the engines and when's my turn? It wasn't that peaceful. It was a wonderful feeling, a mix of personal elation and professional pride. It had taken many years to get to that point. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thank you so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Thank you.